When I was a kid, I thought that being in your 20s was so grown up. I thought I was going to have everything figured out by then, and that was not the case for me. The 20s were full of a lot of changes, a lot of lessons learned, and now that I'm 30, I thought I would share 20 things I learned in my 20s with all of you. It is better to regret the things you've done than the things you didn't do. I feel like the things that haunt us when we look at our pasts are the things that we didn't do and the chances we didn't take, whether that's not trying out for a team because because we didn't think we'd be good enough to make it, or not signing up for a club where we could have met new people, or maybe it's not asking someone to a dance because you didn't think they'd say yes. I don't wanna look back on my life and wonder what would be different if I just had the guts to do something. Which brings me to the second thing that I learned, which is to stop fearing failure. If you are not failing, you are not trying enough. I've really tried to flip my perspective on failure into looking at it as something that's positive because it means I'm trying something new. It means I'm trying to grow. Yes, I could sit at home every day for the rest of my life, never try anything new, and then I could say, yeah, I've never failed. I can't remember the last time I failed. But is that the life that you want? It's okay to not know what you want to do with the rest of your life. This was such a big revelation for me because when I went to college, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I changed my major so many times. And looking back, 18, 19, 20 years old is so young. And of course I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life because I hadn't spent any time living life in the real world yet. And I remember in college when I would call home and talk to my mom and be like, I don't know if I like these classes or if I like this major, I think I might want to do something different. She would always say, it's just as important to find out what you don't want to do as it is to find out what you do want to do. If you start down a path and you realize that it isn't for you, you haven't messed up, you haven't wasted time, you now know that that isn't the right path and you can cross it off your list. It's a process of elimination. And I've started to become comfortable with the idea that I probably won't do the same thing for the rest of my life. And that's okay. I don't need to see the entire path in front of me right now. And on that note, another thing that I learned is it's never too late to change or reinvent yourself. I did a video talking a lot about this that I will have up here or links down below. I know a lot of people around 30 years old who have a much better idea now of what they want out of life than they did when they were 20, myself included, but it's really easy to feel like it's too late, that you need to start your career in your early 20s and what you picked is what you picked. But if you're 30 years old and you started all over at 30 in a different career, a different life path, doing something else, by the time you reach your 60s where you'll likely retire, you would still have decades of experience experience in this new path, in this new field, doing whatever you want to be doing. Someday is not a day. If you want something to happen, you need to plan it, you need to book it, you need to put it in your calendar, you need to make room for it in your life, whether that is traveling. Like if you want to go travel and you're saying someday you're going to go travel, that's not a plan. You need to pick a time, pick a month, pick a place and book those flights. If you want to run a marathon, someday isn't going to cut it. You've got to look up marathons and sign up for one and get a training schedule and put it in your calendar and do it. Don't wait to travel. Don't wait for someday. Don't wait for someone to be ready to go with you. I so wish that I had figured this out earlier in my 20s. If I could go back and change something, that is one of the biggest things I would change. I feel like travel is something that the majority of us hope to do in our lifetime, but we're really good at someday-ing it. And travel, in my opinion, is one of the best experiences a person can have. It changes your worldview, and I don't want to wait until I'm retired to start having those experiences. I want to have those experiences now so that I can begin to shape my life around them. And I did a whole video about why I started solo traveling and why you should too. I'll have it linked up here or down below. You should go watch it if you're on the fence or even if you're not on the fence, maybe I'll put you on the fence and then push you over it. Focus on experiences, not things. Think back on some highlights of your life. Chances are they don't surround a physical material item. They don't surround a pair of shoes or a fancy handbag that you had. Most of your highlights are probably experiences that you had, time you spent with people. You won't remember the things, you'll remember the moments. You will have to work harder to make friends and maintain friendships as an adult. It is so easy to make friends when you're in school and then you get out into the real world and it's really hard, especially for someone who's self-employed like I am and works from home and doesn't even have an office environment to meet new people in. It's really difficult. Another person's beauty does not detract from yours. There is no capacity for 
beauty in this world. There isn't a quota for beautiful people or great qualities. If another woman is more beautiful than I am or has some quality that I don't have, she isn't taking my spot. She isn't taking my opportunity to also be beautiful or have great qualities of my own. So I guess now when I look at the types of women that I used to look at and think, oh, they're so beautiful and perfect and why can't I be like them? I no longer feel envious because nothing about them existing is affecting my potential to be my most beautiful self. There is space for you in this world exactly as you are. I don't need to be someone else. I need to be me. And I spent so many years looking at other people who were popular or who seemed like they had it all together and thought, what can I do to be more like them? And then I started to realize that the things about a person that aren't like everybody else, the things that are uniquely them, are the things that make them great. It's what we love about the people in our lives. So instead of trying to resist my true self, the best thing I can do is lean into it. You will not stick to habits and routines that make you miserable. I am not an early riser. I am never going to be the woman who is jogging at sunrise and it took me nearly 30 years to figure that out. I find so much more success when trying to adopt a new habit or routine in my life when I try to work with what I like, like what I actually like to do. For me, sleeping in later and exercising in the evening just fits me more. It fits my style and what I like to do more. It's much more sustainable than trying to adopt the crazy 4 a.m. workout that I'm seeing a celebrity do. Trust your gut. I swear the gut instinct is a sixth sense. Even though we can't measure it like smell or taste, it is a real thing and my gut has never steered me wrong. I've just had to learn to listen to it, whether it's telling me to do something or telling me that something's not right. Investing and saving with compound interest is so important and you need to start as soon as you can. If you start properly saving with compound interest at an early age, there is no reason why you shouldn't retire a millionaire or a multimillionaire. And I know that that might sound crazy if you aren't familiar with compounding interest and you haven't seen the graphs and the math of how it all works, but it is a real thing, especially if you are in your early 20s or even better, if you're a teenager right now and you're watching this video, open another tab, go start Googling about compounding interest. If you start early, it's gonna make you rich. I wish I started earlier than I did. Your tastes will change. There's not really much else to say about this one other than there were a lot of times in my 20s where I felt so certain that this was the style that I wanted to wear and how I wanted my home decorated and the type of furniture I wanted and it all changes. Rent the cheaper apartment. The novelty of the nicer one always wears off and then you're stuck with a higher monthly payment that you don't want. I made this mistake so many times in my 20s because you know when you go looking at apartments, there's always the one that you saw on Craigslist at the price that you are hoping to stick to, but then they always have a second one and the second one's a few floors higher and it's got corner windows and a little more space. And once they show you that one, the first one that they showed you, which is totally fine, now looks like a dungeon and you're trying to find any possible way that you can justify renting this more expensive, nicer apartment. But then a month or two after you move in, you realize you don't necessarily need to be three floors higher and have corner windows to sit on your couch and watch Netflix all day and you should have rented the cheaper one. Let go or be dragged. This quote has changed my life. One day in college, my roommate came home with this on a magnet, put it on the fridge, and I've never been the same since. And I think this quote can apply to a lot of different situations. I'm definitely the kind of person who can hold on to things, like hold a grudge. And I realized that the only person that I'm hurting when I hold on to a grudge is myself. Like the person that I'm cursing in my head isn't actually experiencing any of the turmoil I am because I can't let something go. And I also like to think of this phrase when there's something in my life that's not working out. If something's not working, don't hold on and let it drag you, except when it's time to let go. Adults don't necessarily have it all figured out. When I was a kid, I thought adults knew everything, they were so knowledgeable, they had it all figured out. And it turns out that I think all adults are just doing their best. Like we're just hanging in there. No one has it all figured out. We're just trying to get through it. Everyone is on their own timeline and there's no timeline that's the right one. The twenties are a really interesting time because when you're a teenager, you're mostly at the same place in life as all of your peers. When you're 14 and you enter high school, everyone's a freshman in high school. And when you're a sophomore, pretty much everyone is turning 16 and getting driver's license. 
licenses. And when you're a senior, everyone's getting ready to graduate. But when you get to your 20s, there are no more rules. Everyone's going in different directions at different paces and everybody's life looks different. There are people at 20 who get married and start having kids. There are people who spend the entire decade of their 20s in school getting degrees. There's no longer this universal way to gauge your life progress. And that can be really stressful because you look around at what other people are doing and maybe someone's posting photos of their wedding on Facebook and you think, wait, should I be settling down in a relationship by now? Or somebody's posting a photo of them holding keys to their new house. They bought a house and you think, what? And you just have to accept that everybody's on their own timeline. Everybody's moving in their own direction at their own pace. And there is no right or wrong direction to move in or pace to go at. It's okay to not be on a traditional path. This was a really big one for me because my full-time job for the last decade has been creating content online, which is very untraditional. And there's something about not being on the traditional path that has made me feel very uneasy at points over the last 10 years, but I've come to accept that maybe the traditional path isn't for everyone. Maybe it wasn't the path meant for me. And then the last thing I learned in my 20s is that the time will fly and 30 is not as old as you think it is. 30 sounds so old growing up, but I found that after 21, you know, after you have the birthdays that you're like really looking forward to, you know, when you're 10, you wanna be 13, cause then you're a teenager and then you wanna be 16 so you can drive and then you wanna be 18 so you can go get a tattoo or pierce something. And then you wanna be 21 so you can go out to the bars with your friends. But after 21, there isn't really a birthday you're looking forward to in the same way anymore. And I found that that is when time begins to blur. Like 21 blurred to 24, blurred to 28 in just like this haze of life. It goes so fast and 30 doesn't feel that different from 25 or 23 to me. I mean, I've grown up in some ways and I've gotten my life together more in some ways, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel like how I expected 30 to feel. And I think my 30s are gonna be even better than my 20s because 30 is pretty awesome. So that's 20 things I learned in my 20s. If any of you who have been through the decade as well have anything to share about lessons you've learned, please leave them down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you know when new videos are posted. And thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build any kind of website, whether it's a store, a blog, a portfolio, and they have 24-7 customer service. I use Squarespace to run my website and I absolutely love the layout and it was so easy to put together. Visit squarespace.com to sign up for a free trial. You can design your site, get it looking good, all ready to go and then head over to squarespace.com slash Allison Anderson to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.